ओम अपवित्रो पवित्रो वा सर्वास्तम गिवा या स्मरेट पुंदरी का क्षम साभायाभ्यंतरा सूचि श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु purified or not purified or even having passed through all situations of life one who remembers the beautiful lotus eyed supreme personality of godhead becomes purified both within and without <clears throat> We are now commencing with the initiation ceremony on behalf of his divine grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada and our Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Parampara <clears throat> This verse from the Vedic literatures, Om Apavitra Pavitrova, very much encapsulates the spirit, the purpose of initiation and human life itself. Whether we are pure or not pure <clears throat> or even while passing through inevitable situations of life if we remember krishna who is supremely beautiful who is the ultimate object to be seen and who is the ultimate object who is eternally at every moment seeing us both from within and without Krishna's pavitra he's all pure by being in Krishna's presence we become purified both within internally and externally purification is a very important subject in the world today because there's so many impurities that cause disease and so many impediments in the pursuit of happiness and health even in my small lifetime i cannot remember as a child ever even hearing of such an idea of bottled water <laughs> you just turn on tap and drink <coughs> or you press button on fountain of public place and <coughs> but today everywhere because there's so much pollution which causes disease and premature <coughs> premature death in so many the air is polluted pollutions are everywhere and due to so many chemicals when i was a child i never heard of the idea of organic <laughs> organic food that was like something from another planet <laughs> but now it's very popular 
simply because there's so much pollution. <clears throat> and in relationships, when there's impurities, infidelities, betrayals, dishonesties, those pollutions cause so much misery to the human mind and the human heart. Cleanliness is one of the basic principles of cultured society, especially Brahminical society. In the pursuit of happiness, to seek purity is natural. But to purify the mind, to purify the heart, it's not just by filtering. It is by coming in contact with the all pure. Krishna's beauty, Krishna's sweetness, Krishna's love, Krishna's mercy is supremely pure. By remembering Krishna, we are in the presence of Krishna. Krishna is absolute. When we hear about Krishna with an open heart, we are with Krishna. When we hear his words from Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is speaking to us. When we see the beautiful form of Radha and Gopinath in their temple room, they are seeing us and we are seeing them. Of course, they're always seeing us, but they appear in this form out of their mercy so that we can reciprocate with them. through service. And the most powerful manifestation of Krishna's presence in this world <coughs> in this age of Kali, Kali Kale Namarabe Krishna Avatar. Krishna appears within his holy names. Sri Radha appears in her holy names. And in the presence of the supremely pure, we become purified. Srila Prabhupada gives example that the sun is full of light and in the presence of the sun there cannot be darkness. And similarly, in the presence of God, in the presence of Bhagavan, all darkness is dispelled. But for many, many countless lifetimes of accumulating contaminations and conditionings within our minds, <coughs> It is not that we instantly become purified. Kirtaniya Sadahari. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught we should always be chanting the holy names of the Lord. And how to chant from the beginning stages of bhakti to the most advanced level of unalloyed ecstatic love in Goloka Vrindavan. It is all revealed to us in these eight verses of Shikshastaka. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, Matya Lila, and Antya Lila, we learn the profound teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
it is so very rare. Our acharyas describe that the very essence and summary of all the Vedic knowledge, the four Vedas, the Upanishads, the Itihastas, all of these various Samhitas, Puranas, they are all spoken by the Supreme Absolute Truth, Krishna himself, in Bhagavad Gita. How important is this scripture? In various avatars, the Lord reveals the truth through his representatives, through various gurus and acharyas, through his various expansions. But Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. The origin of all incarnations descends to this world and is speaking. Krishna is the compiler of all the Vedas. He's the knower of the Vedas. And by all the Vedas is Krishna to be known. Bhagavad Gita is speaking Krishna himself. And the graduate study of Bhagavad Gita, where it culminates, Srimad Bhagavatam begins. Dharma Projita Gaitavatra. It's taking the very heart of the Gita to always remember to Krishna and to surrender to Krishna. And it's beginning from that place. Sukadeva Goswami is speaking. The very son and disciple of Vyasadeva, who Krishna empowered to compile all the Vedic literatures. In the presence of Narada Muni, when Krishna was speaking Bhagavad Gita, he was speaking to Arjuna, and so many of the armies on both sides were present. Sukadev Goswami speaking, and Narada Muni is there, and Vyasadeva, and Parasara, and Vashishta, and Vishwamitra. It was a glorious occasion. And he speaks not only the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, but historical examples under various situations of how devotees follow these teachings. Kunti Devi, Pandavas, <coughs> Dhruva, Prahlad, Ambarish Maharaj, the Prachetas, the mercy of Lord Shiva, the various incarnations of Godhead, Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Narasinga. What a literature this is. And as we often appreciate the context in which Srimad Bhagavatam is spoken in relation to the great devotees of the Lord. It's, all, it's always in the context of tribulations. If Dhruva Maharaja's stepmother would have said to Dhruva, oh, please, can I bring you a glass of water while you're sitting with your father? <clears throat> we would not be concerned with Dhruva. He surrendered under the most heartbreaking conditions of betrayal. 
If King Uttanapada would have said to Saruchi, don't you ever speak to my son like that. <laughs> it wouldn't be in Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> but Dhruva was utterly broken hearted and felt completely unprotected and betrayed. To the extent he left a palace to live, in, to live in the jungle. Not like the forest in Buri Valley, <laughs> where you go in and walk around and then come back. He, he went for his life into the darkest regions where no humans would ever go. Tigers, lions, elephants, snakes, mosquitoes, everything. It was in that situation Narada Muni, his guru, came. And that, that's such an important lesson. Whoever we are, it is not Krishna's way to just come directly. When he incarnates directly in this world, sometimes he does like that. But he's teaching us again and again. He sends his messengers to teach us how to receive his teachings. What were the qualities of Dhruva? And actually, Narada Muni is one of the great acharyas of our Guru Parampara. The essence of what he taught Dhruva coming through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu is what Srila Prabhupada is giving to us. How can we calculate this good fortune? The Pandavas, of course there's the Mahabharat, but why are they prominent in the beginning stages of Srimad Bhagavatam? If Duryodhana would have said, let's just come and make compromise and work things out. You know, we'll bring our lawyers. And <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do today, I think. <laughs> I will not give you enough land that you can put the point of a needle into. He tried to murder them again and again, blaspheme them discredited them. And he's their own cousin brother. And in those days, a cousin and a brother are the same thing. Very difficult. And Parikshit Maharaj, if little Shringi would have said, oh, you know, he was, who cares about these Chatriyas doing crazy things? He was cursed to die. And little Prahlad, what if Hiranyakashipu, what is the best knowledge you know? And Prahlad Maharaj said that, you know, you should go to the forest and surrender to Krishna. Because, because you're, you're trapped in a dark, well, where there's only suffering and illusion. He's five years old. Hiranyakashipu could have said, okay, you know, go take prasad. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to kill his son. Very difficult situations. Ambarish Maharaj and Durvasa Muni there are so many stories, and even when the culmination of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the ninth canto, it describes the pastimes of Lord Ramchandra, but it keeps going higher than that. To Radha and Krishna's descent into this world, to reveal the eternal pastimes of Vrindavan, 
the sweetest, most intimate, loving exchanges that Krishna has with his own expansions in the form of his various energies. Ladini Shakti, Shirata, her expansions, gopis, and limitless jivas who are eternally liberated, dancing with Krishna, playing with Krishna. The power of Lord Narsingadev is an infinite, is just a small manifestation of the power of Krishna's beauty, sweetness, and love for his devotees. That is Vrindavan. Such a culmination. And the culmination of the 10th canto of Vrindavan Leela is Lord Krishna leaves the beautiful Rasa Leela to be with Sri Radha, the Ashrai Vigraha and the Vishai Vigraha, the supreme abode of love and the supreme object of love. There is the lover, the beloved, and love. These three principles. That is bhakti. How Krishna cannot, Krishna is seeking being subordinate to Sri Radha's love. That is the culmination of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita begins from that place at the culmination. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikratir Ladini Shakti Rasma. Radha and Krishna are one, but they are eternally two to enjoy supreme pastimes of love. And again, they have become one as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Radha Bhavatuti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. Krishna, with the Mahabhav, the ecstatic love of Sri Radha and the splendor of her complexion. In the Adi Lila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we learn this, that Krishna, he's the knower of everything past, present, and future. He's the knower of all living beings. He's the creator of everything that exists in the material world. Aham Saravasya Prabhavo. All spiritual worlds emanate from him. But yet, the one thing he wants to know is what is the happiness that Radharani experiences when she tastes my love? What is the nature of her love? So Krishna descends into this world to experience something higher than, he's, than Krishna experiences in the spiritual world. Sri Radha's love. And is coming in this avatar of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the age of Kali. Long ago in Srimad Bhagavatam, Kali Kali, I'm sorry, Kalero Dosani De Rajan Astihe Kamahan Guna. This age of Kali is an ocean of faults. We see what's going on. All the battles, all the wars, all the pollutions, all the corruptions, 
all the anxieties, all the diseases, all the unpredictable conditions. But yet there's one supreme benediction that simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, one can attain not just liberation, the perfection of liberation. How rare is that? What took tens and thousands of years to achieve through tapasya and meditation and satya yuga can be achieved in this little lifetime of ours, even while living in Mumbai, <laughs> if we learn to offenselessly chant the holy names of the Lord with absorption and devotion. It may take some time, but considering it would take 60,000 years of meditation in Satya Yuga, if it takes 80 years in this lifetime, that's not much. It's insignificant. If we understand the value of what Krishna is giving us, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, then we'll never lose patience. We'll never lose faith. We will gratefully continue on. <clears throat> And in Sri Chaitanya Mahap, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, there are so many wonderful, beautiful stories of Lord Chaitanya, who takes the role of his own devotee to teach us how to be devotees, and brings eternal associates down. Nityananda Prabhu, who's Balaram, He's begging door to door for people to take Krishna's holy names. Adidas Thakur is Brahma, the original guru of our parampara and the father of all living beings. He's begging people, please take the names of Krishna. And he's our Namacharya. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, most all the stories of Haridas, or many of them, are in, in the context of challenges. People are trying to destroy him again and again. When, why not just talk about the bliss of chanting? He's, he's come to teach us. The Sankirtan movement started in the public, when Chan Kazi and his military soldiers were persecuting devotees, Lord Chaitanya brought him to the streets. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the mood of a devotee, along with his own, own devotees, are breaking open the storehouse of love of God, tasting it themselves sharing it with themselves. In Sriva Sangam, it was none different than the Rasa Lila. Lord Chaitanya and all of his devotees, even devotees of other avatars, they were tasting the sweetest loving exchanges of Goloka Vrindavan in Sankirtan. Kaviraj Goswami describes it's not just Sankirtan. Lord Chaitanya's special gift is Prem Sankirtan. The congregational chanting that is emanating from the heart of Sri Radharani and Sri Krishna. The Panchatattva tasted the contents and distribute it profusely without considering who is fit or unfit, which place is fit or unfit, which time is auspicious or inauspicious. 
from a karma kanda perspective, these things are very important to get success. But the idea of the Sankirtan movement and the Panchatattva's gifts Devotional service is transcendental to all of these. They've come to give infinite hope, even to the apparent hopeless. And in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we find Lord Chaitanya, his discussions with Sri Ramananda Rai. where the deepest treasures of the love of Krishna, Radha, and Gopis are to revealed. At Prayagraj, Lord Chaitanya teaches Rupa Goswami. In Varanasi, Srila Sanatana Goswami. Such incredible teachings, such incredible lessons, the most beautiful manifested pastimes. And what is the culmination of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita? The last chapter in the Antya Lila, Shikshastakam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally composed these eight verses. What is within these verses? We chant them every day. But what is the vibration that is manifesting to us? How, we, how receptive are we? And it begins with this idea of purification. Jeto Dharapanamarjanam, it cleanse the mirror of the mind, of the heart. And then it describes verse after verse the consciousness as we evolve in chanting of the holy names in devotional service, the characters, the values, the qualities that we aspire for and are given by the mercy of Krishna. <clears throat> Nam Nama Kauri Bahuta. If we can just understand, if we can just appreciate deeper and deeper these verses. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, You have many names, Krishna, and you are within each name. Your form, your pastimes, your abode, your love, everything you are giving to us within your names. And then Lord Chaitanya, he expresses, I have, I have no attraction for chanting your holy names. Such humility. And it goes to the next step, Trinada Pisuni Chena. One should feel oneself more humble than a blade of grass, tolerant like a tree, eager to offer all respect to others and not expect anything in return. In this material world, people are deluded to think that arrogance is great. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving the opposite. He's giving the spiritual consciousness. The extent of the humility he is presenting to us is inconceivable. <coughs> How many people boast about what they've done? How many boast about being lower than a piece of grass. And sometimes Srila Prabhupada would even go lower 
he would say, lower than a straw in a street. A straw in a street means a piece of grass that's uprooted. Haribo. <laughs> The only thing I want is to please you, my Lord. And then Shikshastakam takes us deeper and deeper into this realization. Unconditional love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established the Sankirtan movement by his own arrangement after he took initiation from his guru, Ishwara Puri, in the parampara of Lord Brahma. Brahma, Narada, Madhvacharya, or Vyasdev, Madhvacharya, and Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri had such great disciples, greatest scholars, greatest Nitya Siddha Vaishnavas. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chose to take initiation from Ishwara Puri, not just on the basis of what he knew, but his quality. When his guru Madhavendra Puri was on his deathbed, that means he was going to be leaving any day, any day. He was performing the most menial services with all of his heart to please his guru. Cleaning. After Madhavendra Puri would respond to nature, he would clean. When his guru was crying, where is Krishna? Why am I not with Krishna? He would sing the beautiful glories of Krishna to give happiness to his guru. With total faith. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught this idea of servant of the servant of the servant. He accepted a guru who personified this principle. And the supreme absolute truth, the controller of all controllers, the, the, the proprietor of everything that exists, received mantra from Ishwara Puri, massaged his feet, massaged his guru's legs, cooked for him, cleaned for him. This principle of servant of servant. And then received an order from him. That he should spread the Sankirtan movement everywhere. And it was at that time that Lord Chaitanya, after receiving the order of his guru, he began the Sankirtan movement, coming back from Gaya into Navadweep. And Nityananda Prabhu, who is Balaram himself, the original spiritual master of all living beings, he didn't preach till he got the order from Lord Chaitanya. So this principle is what parampara is. We began our ceremony singing together the Mangala Chadarna, where we are honoring. Srila Prabhupada describes in this sense the word nama. <coughs> Sometimes, you know, we say namaste, namaskar. 
from a Vaishnava perspective, the word nama means to surrender. It just doesn't mean giving respect. It actually means surrender. So we are offering our gratitude, our respects, and our will to surrender to all of these great acharyas of our parampara. And we're remembering the divine qualities of the mercy and the love that they embody. And Srila Prabhupada, he came with that mercy. And why Krishna put him through so many tribulations and difficulties. Because this is the way Krishna glorifies his devotees and gives us a a vision of what it means to follow in the footsteps of a great soul. Mahajano yena gata sabanda. Today's initiation ceremony is a day when we are making of a very f- firm commitment to receive the mercy of our beloved acharyas. And to serve them. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, how can we repay you for all you've given us? He said, just follow what I'm teaching you and share it with others. It's very simple. It's very wonderful. But Maya will test us and make it appear very difficult. And that is why it is so important that we have community of devotees who are committed to receiving and sharing the gift of bhakti. Initiation is a time when we make a very firm commitment to receive the mercy through, through, actually whenever we have faith and we're following, we are connected to parampara. But initiation, we are committing ourselves for life to receive this mercy and to serve. I congratulate all of you. Our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, and all of our Acharyas, and we read so many beautiful stories about them. Their full mercy, their love, their knowledge and wisdom, Everything is accessible to you according to how you open your hearts to receive it through your willingness to serve. And I am so grateful to all of the devotees who have come forward today for initiation. because you are pleasing my beloved Guru Maharaj, our beloved Guru Maharaj Srila Prabhupada in such a special and wonderful way. Before going to America, Srila Prabhupada came to Bombay and he was living very close by, trying to serve his Guru's mission And then later he came here to beg for passage to the West. 
and Jalodutta. And then he came back here with a few devotees and was living in a little flat just a few minutes away from here, Akashganga, sometimes in Jambur. Sometimes he just was given a little room in the Sea Palace Hotel. He was homeless. And now, all of you fulfilling Srila Prabhupada's great desire. And what's even more inconceivable to me is you are allowing me to serve you in your service to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada would tell us, you are all representatives of my Guru Maharaj. If only we can try to adopt this Vaishnav spirit of humility and service, then we could transform so many people's hearts as we together chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I thank you, and with all my heart, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara, I pray that you could remain faithful and steady in your devotional service and you can be a part of Lord Chaitanya's great dream of giving the whole world the holy names of the Lord. And you could find true happiness. Thank you very much.